It's incredible how you can look back at a moment in your life and realize how transformative it was. Often those moments come in split seconds, like the moment you are told that you have breast cancer or that you have a genetic mutation that is responsible for your cancer. In that second, everything changes. Your world stops. You stop breathing and all of a sudden you feel yourself floating away and everything you knew about yourself, your future, your goals, your dreams, your body abruptly comes to a halt. And then you remember to breathe. I can't really explain the moment when I was told that I had breast cancer or when I was given a breast cancer genetic mutation diagnosis. Still to this day, there's a lot about that period of my life that I can't fully recall. I've learned since that when you go through a traumatic experience, your memories become fragmented and you experience a sense of being detached from yourself. You go numb. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I'm an expert on the topic of genetic mutations or that I know something profound that others don't. What I will tell you about is what I've learned from my own lived experiences, from my research for my thesis on the mental and emotional experiences of young women with breast cancer genetic mutations, and from talking to other young women about the challenges that they face during and after a diagnosis with a breast cancer genetic mutation. In my experience and in conversations with other young women who have a breast cancer genetic mutation, there's a gap in services that provide adequate emotional support for young women. This gap is felt at the point of diagnosis and throughout the treatment journey. In my research, Many young women express the need for professional emotional support to help them navigate through processing the diagnosis, their feelings, treatment decisions, family planning and body changes, and the impacts on quality of life post-diagnosis. The breast cancer gene is called BRCA, B-R-C-A, and there are two known markers. BRCA1 and BRCA2. These genes produce proteins that help repair DNA. And when changes occur to the protein, cancer can develop. BRCA1 and BRCA2 genetic mutations are inherited by a parent who has a 50% chance of passing the mutated gene on to the child. People who, are, who have BRCA1 or BRCA2 are at a 50 to 86% higher risk of developing certain cancers, most not notably breast and ovarian cancers, than the average population. For most women I've spoken to, finding out about their percentage risk is what caused the most distress at the time of diagnosis. People with this mutation are also at risk of developing cancers at a younger age than people without the mutated BRCA gene. According to the National Cancer Institute, BRCA mutations account for 5 to 10% of all female breast cancers and 15 to 20% of all familiar breast cancers. The BRCA mutations are found in 1 in 400 people but make up a large portion of young women diagnosed with breast cancer under the age of 40. The recommended treatment for BRCA genetic mutations is to undergo prophylactic mastectomy, the removal of both breasts, and to salpingo oophorectomy, the removal of ovaries and fallopian tubes, which reduces their chances of developing breast and ovarian cancers by 90%. It is important to screen for these mutations early. If you have a family history of breast or ovarian cancer, you can go through uh, testing starting at the age of 18. Many young women discussed wanting to find out about their genetic risk, but did not understand that a positive diagnosis came with life-altering decisions to undergo surgeries and screening, 
which affects their mental health and orientation to the future. What I have found from my own experiences and in interviewing other BRCA positive women in the context of my research is that after diagnosis, women are faced with uncertainty about their health outcomes and often experience heightened health anxiety. BRCA positive women face difficult decisions around treatment options and family planning, and they are left to navigate their mental and emotional well being independently. The outcome of a positive BRCA diagnosis means addressing potentially massive changes in an individual's life, self-concept, relationships, sexuality, fertility, and body image. The process of a BRCA1 and BRCA2 diagnosis is highly medicalized. Statistical information and preventative surgeries to increase life outcomes are the main focus of research. Unfortunately, there's little attention given to the quality of life of the individual after a positive diagnosis. In my research, when I asked other young BRCA positive women to describe the impacts of their diagnosis, their descriptions uh, shared several common themes. Fear, numbness, heartbreak, shock, terror, isolation. As one woman put it, she felt like there was a ticking time bomb. So when we talk about genetic mutations, we also need to talk about the person, the whole person. Genetic research saves lives. It allows for early screening and detection. It offers women the ability to make choices about their health outcomes. While early detection is a proactive and preventative measure, being told that you have, BRCA, that you have a BRCA um, mutation, even if you suspect that you do, is still a shock. Many of the young women that I've spoken to since beginning my research share that one of their first thoughts after diagnosis was, well, this is it. I guess I should start planning my funeral. Young women go through surgeries to, to, to prevent developing BRCA-related cancers, but no one talks about quality of life. No one tells you that health anxiety is something that you will now live with for the rest of your life, and how every scan, every somatic symptom, may trigger panic like you've never experienced before. So what is the solution? My research explores how the integration of psychosocial supports at the time of diagnosis and onwards can mitigate distress, health anxiety, and trauma responses. Psychosocial supports can create a space for meaning making and promote informed and empowered decisions about treatment options. The integration of individualized therapeutic supports into the treatment plan of patients at the time of diagnosis can help destigmatize and normalize processing feelings. Therapeutic supports can teach calming strategies and coping skills to help decrease feelings of distress around scans and surgeries. Therapeutic supports can help young women reclaim their bodies, can help with disassociation and orientation to the future. As this research continues, I hope to create programming for implementing therapeutic supports that are accessible for young women with BRCA uh, mutations. I hope for a future where a young woman can go to her surgeon on Tuesday morning and to her therapist on Tuesday afternoon. I hope that one day sentences that start with I am scared can end with, but I know I'm not alone. Thank you.